Last night, 25 hours ago, we led Checkpoint with the resignation of Waikato DHB Chair Bob Simcock, announced four minutes before we went to air last night. At issue, the overseas trips of former CEO Dr Nigel Murray and personal expenses totalling over $200,000 in three years. What's becoming increasingly apparent now is that people knew Dr Murray was spending way more than was appropriate months before he resigned in October. Why was so little done? Nigel Murray won't talk to us, Bob Simcock won't talk to us, the Ministry of Health won't talk to us, Jonathan Coleman, the former minister, won't talk to us, and now the new minister, David Clark, hasn't been available either. But Sue Maroney was a Labour List MP based in Hamilton who sounded a warning against hiring Dr Murray back in 2014. And as she told us on Checkpoint last week, she sounded that warning to Bob Simcock, the chairman himself. So a short time ago, I asked her if Bob Simcock was right to resign as board chair. It was the right decision, but it was an awful long time coming. It was an awful long time coming, and that's not me making a value judgment, it's just me looking at the dates. You asked Jonathan Coleman a written question I have here when he was first alerted to the concerns about Nigel Murray's spending at the Waikato DHB. Uh, and he said it was June 12th. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, so I was using parliamentary processes to hold the government to account and the board to account for what had happened. And Jonathan Coleman, when he was the Minister of Health, told me that he was first informed about concerns with Nigel Murray's expenses as CEO on the 12th of June. Nigel Murray resigned on October 5th, but what is most fascinating to me is there was a District Health Board board meeting on the 28th of June, so just over a fortnight after the Minister was first told about issues. Nigel Murray was in attendance, the entire board under Bob Simcock was there, and his expenses seem not to have been discussed. Look, it was an extraordinary period of time where uh, there was information that Bob Simcock was obviously briefing the Ministry of Health and the Minister of Health on, and yet not alerting his own board to. So they were um, blissfully unaware of the concerns that Bob Simcock already had by that stage, and um, were operating as normal. And, and yet, um, everything, it, it was all anything but normal by that stage. So what was going on? And obviously, it's really hard to answer this question without Bob Simcock, who will not appear on Checkpoint, without Jonathan Coleman, the former minister, who will not appear on Checkpoint, and we have repeatedly asked them both, and the programme is theirs if they care to front. We would love to talk to them. But do you know, can you begin to even imagine why this was happening? Well, look, I was asking Jonathan Coleman uh, about what action he was taking once he knew about the concerns, and his replies to me in writing were that he was just going to sit back and wait for the board to deal with it. So it was a really hands-off approach from Jonathan Coleman, and I thought it was just pure hypocrisy to see him making public statements today saying that it had taken far too long for Bob Simcock to resign as the board chair. Uh, this all happened under Jonathan Coleman's watch as the minister, and despite my um, questions to him, trying to put pressure on him to act on it, he simply did nothing over that period of time. Right. Why was anyone in a position of power and also knowledge so reluctant to blow the whistle on Nigel Murray? Does it come back to this deficit that the Waikato DHB was running, real pressure on clinical services, real pressure to cut money, and Nigel Murray's preparedness to do that? Was he the ministry's man in Waikato, and was that why people were so reluctant to hear ill spoken of him? Oh, look, I don't know why he got away with it for as long as he did. Uh, all I know is that if Bob Simcock had been watching him carefully like he, he told me that he would do, then there's no way that you would have had a CEO who was away from the workplace that long. There's no way that you actually would have had a CEO who wasn't putting his expenses forward for two years in a row and the State Services Commission having to write to the DHB and say, where are your CEO's expenses? Those things were going on the whole time while Donald Coleman was the minister and he was failing to act on them. 
you blew the whistle in 2014 and said, don't hire this man. The Association of Salary Medical Specialists, on the basis of what they were hearing out of Southland, said, don't hire this man. Annette King said, why have you hired this man? What can we learn from what we have seen here? How can the hiring of a guy called Nigel Murray or the woeful absence of supervision of a guy like Nigel Murray be avoided in the future? Well, it raises some really serious questions for me around how well uh, people on DHB boards understand their role in terms of governance and their accountability for these sorts of issues. Because I've watched while um, the Waikato DHB has, I think, uh, frozen over the issue when it became apparent that Bob Simcock hadn't had the adequate oversight that he should have had. Uh, still, the DHB board were prepared to uh, give full confidence to Bob Simcock in his role as chair. That, to me, says that there's some serious deficits in board members and what they understand their role actually is and what their accountability is. So, 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 the so, so sorry to interrupt, on. but Bob Simcock, in fact, said to Karen Brown, our health correspondent, and, and we played this interview on Checkpoint, that it wasn't his responsibility, that N Nigel Murray was up to no good, that wasn't his fault. And, and, and last night, the acting board member, sorry, the acting board chairperson told us that she didn't see how Bob Simcock could have known. So do the rules of governance have to be stressed to the boards of DHBs? Well, look, if we've got chairs or acting chairs saying that they don't have responsibility for how a CEO behaves and acts and that it's not their responsibility to have strong oversight on that, then we have got a problem because that's what the New Zealand taxpayer relies on is that the people who are appointed and elected to these boards are looking after the taxpayer's interests, and in this case, they simply were not. Sue Maroney, who was uh, a Labour List MP in Hamilton throughout this period, and spoke to Bob Simcock about not hiring Nigel Murray back in 2014.